Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make NBA DFS content, prize picks content, all these videos that get posted to the subreddit. You can ask me questions about the slate, pretty much anything you need. I'll have this link down below. And if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right here. All right, let's get into my lineups from last night. I had a break even day. We can pull it up. Showdown did broke even, main slate kind of broke even. Um, <clears throat> single entry cash. My core for um, this slate was DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, Garrison Matthews. And I told everyone to get to another bowl. The bowl I went to was Kobe White in this lineup, but I had some other lineups that did not get into the cash in the main GPP. Unfortunately, just had too many duds around them. Um, like this lineup, I had what? Caleb Martin and some mid, just full mid. This lineup, I had Maxi, uh, Caleb Martin again, DeAndre Hunter. Caruso got injured. He was in a lot of my lineups. That was a bit unfortunate, but I did nail a decent amount for this slate. First off, <clears throat> you can find an edge on playoff slates, especially... <sighs> Because I know the Sixers well. I thought they were very, very low on Nicholas Batum's minutes. I thought they were very, very low on Kyle Lowry's minutes. Kyle Lowry played 19 first half minutes. Unfortunately, he only ended with 29 minutes, I think it was. Um, <clears throat> but still played more than I think the field expected him to. So that was an edge you could find there. Yeah, 29 minutes. Just shot 3 of 10. Had a poor shooting game. Still did good for his price points for a playoff slate. But that was huge. Like, we had some really good days in Discord because Batum had a really good game. Kyle Lowry was solid. I was very, very high on all the Bulls. Another guy I was extremely high on was Clint Capella. He absolutely nuked the slates. So, like, we had really good days in Discord. But for me, this slate was definitely a break even slate for me. So, yeah, hopefully you guys had a good night. And uh, let's get into the slate. So, Chicago, I'm expecting everyone in. Uh, maybe Drummond sits, but that's about it. So, First guy we'll talk about here is Alex Crusoe. I don't I don't see how I play Alex Crusoe. I watched that entire game last game. He was just standing in the corner. Like he could barely move. He's 5.8K. If he's unowned in GPPs, I guess it's okay. Like this will be something I'll monitor up until lock. Pre-game interviews, interviews, night before, practice, looking at all the stuff I can find with Alex Crusoe. I'll I'll update you guys on Reddit as well. So like if he's going to look similar to how he did last game after he got hurt, I have a tough time paying this price point for him. But if he's going to be unowned in GPPs and we get news that he's feeling good, he's going to be full go and we're expecting high 30s minutes, then you can absolutely play him at no ownership tomorrow. He was a really good play in this game going up against Atlanta. Now, a completely different situation going up against Miami, but he would still be playable at no ownership. So like that's something we will monitor. I will make updates about that when I do find some more news. One guy I prefer straight up over Caruso is definitely Ayo Dusumo. I do expect him to play here, and I expect him to pretty much play all the minutes he can handle, which makes him playable at 6-1. These guys aren't as good of plays as they were going up against Atlanta, but they're still decent options. We're going to talk about some better plays on Miami, Sacramento, the Pels, but don't forget about the Bulls. They're going to run a really tight rotation. They're going to play DeMar all the minutes he can handle. They're going to play Kobe all the minutes he can, he can handle. Vooch is going to play a ton. Ayo is going to play all the minutes he can handle. So, like, don't forget about these guys. And I have a feeling that these guys could be lower owned than they should be tomorrow because I have a feeling everyone's going to flock to Miami. Everyone's going to flock to the Kings. Everyone's going to flock to the Pelicans that leave Chicago pretty much the odd man out. Now, do I think they're as good of a place as they were last time? No, absolutely not. Especially Kobe White at 7.5K. Cruz being injured. Io priced up. No, but if they're going to be low owned with the amount of minutes they're going to play in a must win game, they're certainly firmly in play. And if they're unowned, they're going to be solid GPP plays. So I am very, very interested in Tabar Vooch, Kobe Way, Io, just solely because of the amount of minutes they're going to play. Um, I still think they're decent options. If I had to rank them straight up, it would be Demar Vooch, Kobe, Io, Caruso. If I had to rank them point per dollar, it would be De Demar Vooch, Io, Kobe White, Caruso. 
but I still think they're decent options. If for some reason Caruso does sit, you're going to see a significant bump for Io, and then I would like Io at 6.1k, and then Javante Green, Dalen Terry will benefit from that. They would be playable at least. I don't know if I get the Drummond at 4.3k. I don't think he plays much, probably like eight minutes if he does play. I think Vooch is just going to play all the minutes he can handle here. And then there's this running such a tight rotation. I can't consider any of the bench. I, I just can't if everyone's healthy. Um, Javante Green, I guess, at 5.3k, but he's overpriced, right? Uh, I think the main interest here is Io, Kobe White, Vooch, Demar, who I think are all solid plays. Let's move on to Miami. One of my more favorite teams to target. Butler out. Rozier out. Duncan Robinson is probable. So, one guy, two guys, or no, one guy I'm intrigued by here in large field GPPs. Let's talk about this for a minute. Duncan Robinson was a DMP last game. I think he could absolutely DMP tomorrow. If I had to guess, he will be in the rotation, but there is always going to be a chance that he can DMP. But say Chicago is winning. Say they're up like 10 to 15 points. They need offense, right? No Butler. Do they play Duncan Robinson 25 to 30 minutes? I think that could absolutely happen tomorrow, depending on how the game flow is going. And if you get 25 to 30 minutes from a Duncan Robinson, now I wish he was cheaper, but he's gonna no one is going to play Duncan Robinson tomorrow. Absolutely no one. So this is strictly large field GPP only, 150 max. Don't do it in single entry, most likely. Um, I am intrigued here by Duncan because I do think there is a chance he probably will play, and I do think there is a chance that he could push for 20 plus minutes. Now, do I think it's likely to happen? No, probably not, but it's the risk versus reward. If you get this play right and he does push for 30 minutes tomorrow randomly, he could win you a tournament. So I will mention Duncan Robinson here. It's not someone I'm probably going to go out and be playing, if at all. Uh, but for you MME guys that play 150 lineups, I would 100% sprinkle in some Duncan Robinson. Maybe play like him in like 2 to 3% of lineups. Well, whatever his ownership comes in at, we'll see. But like intrigued there by him. But let's talk about the other value here. Starting lineup should be Tyler Harrow, Bam Adebayo, Caleb Martin, Jamie Jackis, Nikola Jovic. I do not like Jovic. I still don't think he's going to get a big minutes bump with Jimmy Butler off of the court. I just don't think they trust him. I think they trust Caleb. I think they trust Jamie. I think they trust Highsmith over Jovic. So Jovic is a guy I am not high on at all, even at that price point, especially at that price point, I should say. The guys I really like here, Caleb Martin, Jamie Jackas, I think are two of the better value plays on the slate at 5.4K, 5.2K respectively. I think they play big, big minutes here. I like both quite a bit at their price points. And then I really like Bam Adebayo. I really like Tyler Harrow. I think they're really good spend ups. Harrow might be a bit easier to get to at his price point, but I think they're both really good plays. Just think about what the offense is going to be. It's going to be Hero. It's going to be Bam. It's going to be, you know, Caleb. Um, could they play Kevin Love alongside Bam? Could. I, I guess he's intriguing in large field GPPs. Um, last game, I think he only got the backup five, got a bit extended due to Bam Adebayo foul trouble. I wouldn't be shocked if they played Kevin Love a, a bit alongside Bam Adebayo. So that's another guy in large field GPPs. If you are playing MME that you could sprinkle in some a bit more of, but high Smith, the four, six, I'm expecting around 30 minutes from, which makes him firmly, firmly in play. Now at 4.6k, he's probably priced right, but at least he is playable probably going to get a bump as well. I think they just really trust him. Good rebounder. So don't mind Highsmith there. I think Caleb and Jamie are definitely better. I think they're both really good values. And I really like Tyler Harrow. I really like Bam at Bio. Just messing me. All right, let's move on to Sacramento. One of my, once again, one of my favorite teams to target. The price points here are just off. And they're running a seven-man rotation, basically. Look, Alex Lang got extended because his spawn is foul trouble. And that's it. They ran seven bodies, pretty much. So, I really like this team once again. Harrison Barnes, I think, stands out as one of the better value plays in the slate. I'm expecting big minutes from him. He looks really good. Um, Trey Lyles is playable at 3-7. Davion's fine. I forgot to mention DeLon Wright. Sorry about that. I don't mind DeLon Wright, too, at 3.8K. I would expect he'll be in the rotation, obviously. I don't know if we see 23 minutes again from him. But if we get, like, 15 to 20, sure, it makes him a solid value at 3.8K. Ownership, we'll see what his ownership comes in at. If he's chalky, you can make the argument to fade. All right, back to Sacramento. Yeah, I think Harrison Barnes stands out as one of the better value plays in the slate. I'm expecting big minutes once again from him. He's going to shoot when he's out there. I don't mind it. I think he's a solid value. Um, I'm not going to touch Alex Lem with the 10-foot pole. Trey Lyle should see high teens minutes. Okay, point per minute guy. I don't mind it for salary relief. Um, Keon Ellis at 5K should see big, big minutes. Probably, I, 
They could always go to Davion over Keon, so that's like one thing you have to keep in mind. Like, it's not a guarantee that he's going to play 40 minutes again, but I wouldn't be shocked if he does. They could always play a bit more Davion over him. But if we get high 30s a minutes again, makes him a solid option. I really like the top guys here. Keegan Murray, De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Bonus. DeMontis Bonus is the best spend up on the slate, in my opinion. I love him at 9.5K. De'Aaron Fox at 8.8K should play big, big minutes. He's a really good play. Keegan Murray, I still really like a 5.9K. And then the value we went over. Keon is solid. Harrison Barnes, one of the better value plays in the slate. Trey Lyles is firmly in play. Davion's playable. So this team looks really, really solid to me. Let's move on to the Pelicans. So the big news here is Zion's out. So, yeah, I think we have to start here with Jonas Valanciunas and Larry Nance. All right, so ownership is going to tell apart in what I do with the bigs here. If Larry Nance is going to be popular, I'm just going to go to Jonas Valanciunas. If Jonas Valanciunas is popular, I'd rather just play Larry Nance, right? Now, I'm not saying I'm playing any of the bigs, but if I were to play one, I would just go to the lower end option. I don't have a good read on what they're going to do with the bigs. Historically, Jonas Valanciunas has done well against DeMontis Bonas. I don't tend to use historic stuff, but he has done well. I just thought I'd bring that up a little bit. And if he plays really well, I wouldn't be shocked if they extend him and like say Jonas and Nance kind of split the full 48. If they do split the full 48, I'd much, much rather play Jonas Valanciunas because he's the much, much better point per minute guy. But if Jonas gets us like 15 minutes or less, then it's tough to go there at that price point. Then you want to look to like a Larry Nance. Like it's tricky here. I don't have a good read on what they're going to do here with the bigs. I, I really don't, but they're both firmly implied. I would just pick whoever's low owned if you were going to go on. Um, so yeah. Then looking at the top guys, Zion is out. I would expect Ingram to get a minutes bump here. Instead of playing 25 minutes, I would expect 32 to 33 minutes here going up against Sacramento. I like the price point at 7.7K. I think he's a decent option. And then I really like CD McCollum with no Zion. He gets a huge bump with Zion off the court. And then Ingram's assist percentage, he stuffs his stat sheet a ton more with Zion off the court. He has a 35% assist percentage with Zion off the court. Um, so I think both the top two guys look good here. I do prefer CJ straight up. And then Herb Jones, Trey Murphy, I'm expecting them to play all the minutes they can handle. I think they're really good mid-range plays. Trey Murphy has the higher ceiling, um, can stuff the stat sheet. Herb Jones, more of a stock guy. Um, he has an insane ceiling as well. If he goes for like three steals, like 15 points, they're going to play all pretty much all the minutes they can handle. So they're both really good options. Kind of went over the bigs. Then Alvarado should play high teams, low 20s minutes. Kind of a similar play to DeLon Wright. Um, I, I'll probably just go to whoever's lower on there if I were to play one, but playable. And then Najee Marshall, I guess, could enter the rotation with no Zion, but I don't know if I can do it. And then Dyson should play a little bit, but I don't think I can go there. So that's going to wrap it up for the slate. I hope you guys had a good night, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.